Hi, this is Kung Nguyen. I would like to say thank you to Eric and uh, Trimlight for inviting me to do a demo for this event, Pastel Life. So let's start. Seeing the time is limited, I am showing you the drawing states at the time lapse video. For this demo, I'm working from life. The model is Megan, and Megan is my friend of mine, and she is one of my own time favorite models. It takes three sections of the 20, 20 minutes, and the model has five to 10 minutes break uh, between each sections. For the materials, uh, I use sandpaper and a pastel pencil for this demonstration. To start, I use a series of brown uh, color pencils. I start with the CBR first, then when the drawing foundation was set, when I'm happy with this, I use a darker brown color pencil to darken the drawing. Uh, for the uh, method, I use competitive method for the drawing. I measure and I compare the distances from her hairline to the middle of her eyebrows, from her eyebrow to the bottom of her nose, and from the bottom of her nose to the bottom of her chin. I notice that the distance from the middle of her eyebrows to the bottom of her nose is the longest one, and the distance from the hairline to the middle of her eyebrows is the shortest ones. When the drawing structure is uh, established, I am continue to work on her facial features. Uh, using very simple straight lines, I draw her nose, her eyes, and her lips. I also use the CBR color to fill in the shadow areas. This technique is also called blocking in shadow. Since the foundation of this drawing already looks promising, I am confidently draw her face with a darker pencil. At this point, I am carefully place her eyes, nose, and lips. Remember that she tilted her head slightly, so all the features of her face are tilted as well. Drawing is the foundation of art, and I recommend it taking time to draw every day. You can draw from life or using photography. The more time you spend to draw, the better your drawing skill will be. After a few sections, I finally finished the drawing. I'm very happy with it so far. It's time for me to move on to the next stage. And now the drawing is finished. I am very happy with it. Um, so far it looks uh, quite nice and it looks like Megan. Uh, for the next step, I would like to add to use a color like this, all white, it could be light pink, light yellow, uh, light gray, uh, add some highlights on her face, like the highlights on her nose, highlight on top of her uh, eyelid, uh, forehead, cheekbone, um, very light touch of highlight. Why? I like to add some values in it. Now, it looks a little bit flat, but when the highlight get in, in her face, she gonna pop out and while I'm doing this it helped me a lot for the next step called Videccio and I will talk about Videccio um, where it come from and uh, what the techniques is about for the next step but now let's start uh, with this um, color here uh, light pink add some color and then after this you're gonna turn her into a green lady let's start uh, to start to put the highlights on her face, um, I use a very light pressure, very light from the beginning. Uh, no reason for me to uh, uh, get hurry. Very light touch. And I like to start with the nose first. And you can see how um, the form it turned into three-dimensional right after 
I add some highlights on it. The keys of the technique is being patient, okay? You have to be very patient. And you notice that I, uh, I use mostly the tip of the pencil. And this color is kind of off-white, a little bit warm tone, it's like light pink. But you can use any uh, colors. Uh, it could be light gray, it could work too. Uh, it could be like uh, yellow, uh, it could work too. You don't have to be exactly the same color. And the technique I'm using here is called cross hatching. Uh, you see, I use this direction, and I can also go back different direction. see that um, you see I'm turning my uh, direction here and try to uh, build the forms the key thinking about values and forms so I don't I like her to look three-dimensional um, so it's important to learn a little bit of anatomy so you understand the structures of the muscle so for example here I know I'm going to use this direction here because of all the muscle you go like this around her mouth so that's good that you have some knowledge about this and those chokes gonna create the illusion of how to make it look more uh, beautiful For my technique, I have four stages. The first stage called drawing, this stage, drawing. The second stage is the Vadaccio, well, gonna be after this one. Uh, the third is uh, building up uh, colors. You're gonna layering lots of color on top of the Vadaccio. And the five final stage is the detail. So we are still on the first stage drawing stage. Let's add some of this. And again, the, uh, the pressure here is light. You can see it light here. If I want to be a little bit stronger, I can press uh, the pressure as, you know, a little bit stronger here. And when the pressure is stronger, it's also changing the values. So the key is control the pressure, okay? The same color here, but I make it stronger. And the value is stronger here. Now I can go a little bit more um, 
on value study here. The chop a little bit smaller chop. So now that you can see that I'm finished with this stage now, then um, the next stage uh, I want to do is uh, the Vedaccio. Uh, just have a few more highlights here and there, then I'm going to move on to the next stage. Okay, let's do the Vedaccio. Vedaccio is underpainting technique that originated by the early Renaissance Italian mirrorless. This formula is applied by mixing black, white, and yellow ochre. This mixture will give a greenish gray color, which is very effective for darker shades of human skin. The Vedaccio technique was used by the artist at the value study that creates a foundation for the richer colors and details added later. Today, we can still recognize this formula in the famous works of Italian artists, especially evidence in Michelangelo's famous The Sitting Chapel mural. Throughout history, Producing realistic skin tone have proven to be one of the greatest challenges for portrait artists. Remnants left on the murals and oil paintings on wood in the 13th century Italy proved that since the Middle Ages, painters have been constantly searching for the recipe to mix human skin color. They already knew that if green were used at the background and the fast tones draw on it would pop out in more convincing and authentic way. Green is a complementary color to red, and blessing these two together or on top of each other in a picture can create a very effective effect. Green can also diminish some the shades of orange or pink tones. For the initial awareness, pedestrian technique a foundation painting was formed. To start the Vedaccio technique, I like to use the green called the green foundation. In my hand, you can see I have different uh, shades of green here. This one is the lightest one. This one is kind of mid-tone. This one is the darkest one. So I'm going to start with the lightest one and the highlight area. The middle one for the mid-tone is and the darkest one is where it is the shadow uh, areas is. Um, I start very light with a very uh, light pressure to medium pressure. I'm not going to do heavy pressure yet because I don't want to ruin the surface and I want to save that um, surface for the next layer of color. We're going to have a lot of color on top of this. So let's start together. First, I'm going to use the lightest uh, green here. I start from the highlight on top of her nose. I mentioned this again and the pressure is light. And you notice I use mostly uh, the tip of my pencil here. Right, you see I'm just on top of the highlight. Some of the mid-tone here. At this point, 
it all more like I'm studying values in green. Did that make sense? So I can add the um, uh, this kind of midtone green. Uh, so I next to this highlight. You need to think about our uh, values. Think about forms and about shape. Okay. Three dimensional. You see how is this? Her nose is pop out. You can change the direction of the shocks if you want to. I'm using here called again I mentioned it's uh, in the drawing stage. It's called cross hatching technique. The darkest one, here you go. I'm gonna add some in the shadow area. But very light. Think about transition all the time, okay? Where the shadow get into the mid-tone soft the edges very patient at this point I just use three different shades of green and very focused about the values we study value with green here I almost done with uh, the Vedaggio state. Uh, just working on this uh, dark green on the shadow area. Very light touch, and you can see the gap in between is um, getting bigger. Uh, so I don't want to fill them too much of this green. Just enough. Just enough to have the green color here. Because I, I have to save room for the next colors. Try to make the shoulder kind of pop out too. Okay, that was it. So let's move on to the next color. For the next color, I'm using uh, uh, yellow ochre uh, colors uh, in my hand. I have three uh, pencil. One is a little bit lighter, one a little bit darker. Then I'm gonna use the lighter uh, colors on the highlights on her face and some of the uh, mid-tone. It's similar to the last layer we use in green, so this time I use yellow ochre. Uh, very same concept, light color on highlight and mid-tone, and darker, darker colors going to be on the shadow areas. I also use the uh, same technique 
uh, Gaussian um, Gauss hatching. You can see it here. For, for a couple of minutes, you're going to turn from green to yellow. And you notice that I'm changing the direction uh, of my pencil all the time. I'm trying to build uh, the form here. See that? Um, sometimes you feel like you lost the highlights a little bit. And you can just use uh, uh, some light color pencil. Could be like gray or light yellow, light pink. You add back the values with a little bit of this on top. So you bring back the forms. After finish the yellow ochre layers, I use this color, like kind of uh, lavender colors. Uh, I'm continue to add in uh, this color on her face, uh, but I only add this color on top of the highlight and the mid tone. I'm not gonna use this color for the shadow area, so that's very important. Okay, to remember, I use this color on top. Of the highlight by the highlights in, on top of her nose and on the mid tone area not too much in the shadow area very light touch and I always use just the tip of my pencil here So after finished the uh, lavender layers, I'm adding this color. It got a teen skin tone color, a little bit of a warm yellow earth tone. So I'm gonna use this color on top of similar concept on top of the highlight and the mid tone only. Okay, I'm not gonna go using this color in the shadow areas. The reason is because this color is very light in values. If I use this color on the shadow area, I'm going to change the values of my uh, 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 painting. Uh, when I'm teaching, I call this color is the rescue color. Because this color is uh, united all the layer together. So you can see it here. When I add this color on top of her skin tone, changing right away. Same concept using cross hatching but this time I use uh, a smaller chalks and the gap a little bit smaller too so I want to make it look smoother so here you can see some textures in here but when I add this color on top of it our skin is going to become very very smooth
highlights um, with transition from mid tone to shadow. You can see that she looks like her skin tone now, but I'm not even done yet. Same concept before, I'm working on a highlight, mid-tone. I'm losing some of the highlights here. So I'm going to use the same color. The kind of off-white colors, and I'm going to boost back the highlight. Like, for example, right in the che her cheekbone right here. It takes me about 20 minutes to uh, just finish this layer. It means uh, uh, you need to be very patient, okay? So all the hard work is, uh, is done. So we've been building many layers of color to come to this stage. And you can see that now it looks like skin tone now. It's not even done yet. We are like, you know, 40% of uh, her skin tone. Uh, but before I go for the next steps, uh, I would like to add some warm colors in it. It's just like uh, it's like um, uh, something warm. It could be like this one. It could be uh, cadmium red. Uh, I will start adding some of the warmness color on her face. I'm starting with the nose, just top of the nose, okay? Top of the nose, uh, around her eyes, could be like in the tear ducts here, on top of the upper lid, the lower lid, just add some warm colors up, you know, on top of her eyes. And you can just see, it's like she come alive, right? Um, the reason I'm doing this because it, the uh, the muscle here and the skin tone here is, uh, in general, is warmer. Even I'm working with the light model in front of me, I'm still working on what I see plus what I know. So I, I'm not just looking at the model. Sometimes I add the color based on my knowledge. And later on, I will continue to adjust what I see plus what I know to work together. You see that she, she come alive now with just a little warmness in her face. Um, I would like to add a little bit more. 
top of the nose. Maybe along the side of the nose too. And I'm gonna put some in her uh, cheekbone here. You can use some any any kind of red colors. It could work. Something warm. Or sometimes I add a little bit of magenta in it to make it look more dramatic. I'll let you do a makeup for her right now. So a little bit of warmness in the cheekbone here. Some in here too. her face right now is it this is very strong colors and I will ask on her lips some of her chin too around along her face you can see that she's warm up now and later on, I'm going to use a dark brown to redraw it. And I notice here in her shoulder also a little bit warmer. This could be where it's exposed to the sun, right? So in our face, when we uh, have the sun, uh, exposed to the sun, the skin tone getting warmer and darker in general. So I can see that it looks a little bit warmer here too. along the neck here it's fun isn't it now she come alive now she's no longer a real lady so let's do our, our darker brows and redraw her face and then we can start working on her eyes uh, for details, nose and lips, all right? So you, you see in my hand here, I have a, a black, uh, dark brows and a little bit of a burgundy, uh, warm brows. So I'm gonna use three of this color to redraw her face and add some of those uh, darker values in here, okay? This is black, very light touch, okay, very light touch. So I think here the eyebrow is uh, darker than the shadow, so I add some black first. So I'm just working on, you know, first I redraw the drawing, and second I'm thinking of values, okay. The shadow here is not a dark enough. This is a little bit darker brow. Be careful with the transition, okay? This is a um, the form shadow here. It's come along her nose. Now I can take a look at my drawing again and look at her face there and I make sure that I get that little curve in here. It's so beautiful. I need to make sure I got this. Very sharp shadow here. A little bit strong in come along. Later on, I'm gonna add small colors in this uh, this light here. But now I'm trying to make sure I get the right shape. Also, add a little bit more darker values. 
and this all here it should be darker sure that edges is softer. Same concept, we're gonna come along with her face. Make the value darker, okay? Beautiful shadow, far into her, uh, into her face here, gorgeous. Same thing with his eyes, a little bit darker. light touch. All right, so it's time for me to work on details. So after I have all the foundation were done, the color were done, so I'm very happy with this. It's time for me to focus on the, the her uh, facial details, uh, such as the eyes, no lips. So I will start with the eyes right now. Um, are you black? gonna add some more darker values in here so it's make me easy to control uh, when I have like a little bit black in the eyebrows here I can, can compare that value here compared to the shadow area so make it easy for me to um, correct my uh, value for the drawing against values is so important colors you can change a little bit here and there but you can just uh, just try to think about values all the times because that's um, value can make the um, drawing uh, look much better. I'm gonna add a little bit darker in here. See, I get using black, and the uh, the pressure is light. And are you cross hatching again? To add a, a darker uh, shadow here, right in the corners of her eyes. Even though I use in black, but the pressure is light, so it's not quite a hundred percent of uh, of. Um, black. So I use that as a foundation. Then I continue to add different brows 
on top of it. Okay, I work in form sometimes I work from dark to light. So I use black as a foundation first, then I add you know, brows on top to make it darker here. I just make this uh, a little bit darker in value right here. To work on this eyes, same thing as some black. In the final touches later on, I can add a little bit more highlights here and there, but now I'm just looking for the value first. Like I'm just a little bit darker here, the shadow is falling, and her eyelash here. Very, very light touch, okay? I think it should be even a little bit stronger. I like to add yeah. the redness just right here. Okay. Can I see a very light, very you know, a little bit of highlights in here. Just a little bit, okay. So let's move on to the lips. Okay, so I know that she her she have a, a mouse open a little bit here. Gonna working on the corner of the mouse. Remember this uh, I call it a donut muscle here. It's very important for uh, um, for portraiture, uh, right here, right in the muscle, right in the brows, the corners of the mouth is showing uh, emotion. So I want her to, uh, even Megan posing right now, she, uh, I think it's a couple hours, she might look tired, but um, I want to give her mouth look a little bit smiling. Think about the Mona Lisa with the corners of her mouth, right? Make them round like a donuts in here. Something a little bit warmer.
add some highlights just to get fair. It's very light touch here. So I want this uh, area a little bit darker. So I continue to use uh, brown to add uh, darker values here. It is good to step back sometimes, okay? And you can see the value better. This whole thing here should be darker. Using black, and I want this uh, area. I don't need a lot of details in here because I want it push back in the shadow area. So it's just uh, it make no sense if you uh, you put details everywhere, all right? So sometimes less is more. So you don't have to get a lot of details. Just focus in here, and the rest could be soft and disappear. I just add some yellows in here and see how it's work. I don't think I have time to work with so detail with the flower thing, but it's just fun to add some colors in it first. For now. Symbol like that. Just a little bit. Yellows, just soft. Let's see how it's go. Maybe it's too much, but uh I can soft the edges. Soft all the edges here. So a little bit darker. Details of the hair. Just the hair come. Make a symbol. Some of their tiny little hair fall into her forehead. Soft the edges. So before I working on her uh, uh, head dress, I want to add some backgrounds in it first. I'm going to use soft pastel, kind of grayish, purplish, maybe add some backgrounds. And I'm going to work on the, the fabric and then come back for the detail. We are done. As you see, uh, I'm very happy with the result for the portrait right now. But before I go for the final touches on her face, I would like to add some backgrounds uh, to make the more contrast. This is just uh, gray. I should add some grays around here.
At the same time, I'm softening the edges here. You see that I'm trying to use the side of the pencil. So if I use this, it's okay too. But I like to do the side so I can create like a chalk. the same thing this side and sometimes I can even use a, a little bit of uh, salt pasta Make it uh, this kind of bluish kind of gray with a little bit on top of it, changing the temperature to make it a little bit more green is gonna be nice. But again, uh, background is very optional. Okay, you, some people like the backgrounds, some people don't. After uh, apply the backgrounds, and I think it's so for the final touch, I would ask come back to ask back some highlight. Make sure all the highlight look beautiful. Just add a little bit of final touch in there. A little bit of just um, warm tone yellows. The highlights a little bit stronger here. Yeah, actually, I'm very happy with this right now, and uh, because of the time I'm limited, then I think it's, I'm pretty done with this demo now. And this is time for me to sign my name. I like to the composition here, I'm gonna sign my name right here. Hi, welcome back to my studio. After a few hours, um, I finished my demo and I hope that you enjoy uh, the time watching me and thank you. I also want to say thank you to uh, Trimlight and Eric for inviting me for this very special event. Um, I'm looking forward to see all of you again sometime soon. Uh, please take care, be well, and do keep doing what you love. Bye-bye, take care.